Hello, everyone. My name is Tero Pesson uh, from TCCA, and here I am with Peter Smith, uh, the chair of uh, uh, 3GPP CT in Edinburgh, uh, and the fourth um, plenary, plenary, plenary 102. Welcome. Great to have, have you with us. Uh, it's been, we are towards the end, end of the, the week. CT has already finalized the 102. So how did it go and how, how did the year look like and, and what do we have, have to expect next year? Yeah. Hello, Tero. So nice to speak to you here in Edinburgh. As usual, we are now on the fourth day of these TSGs 102. CT always, always started on Monday, closed on Tuesday. Uh, this week, we have nearly no controversial issues in CT in the TSG. Most of the controversial topics were solved by within the working groups already before, or were postponed to the next quarter due to some uh, difficulties to find consensus. So this year, we had the good advantage, the good advantage we had face-to-face -face meetings mm -hmm. all over the year. This helps us really to progress the work. And in the next quarter, the intention is to finalize release 18. And this is an also, uh, <clears throat> at least on in March, release 18 should be frozen from a stage three perspective and the code freeze will be happen in June next year. So this will be the challenges to complete everything on time and to align all the TSs from within CT and also all the TSs with, uh, from SA. So that SA and CT specs shall be then also aligned at that point in time, latest by June next year. So there's like a half a year time, time to do all that work. Yes. Have you already received all the relevant information from, from various other, other uh, parties in SA, SA? Let's say in this way, uh, we start to get the information last year in December. And the latest news we got in November this year. And that's why that we need to alignment because stage two still detects uh, things what they need to correct. And we always need to align them. And when we identify something what cannot be implemented, then we have to inform SA that they might need to do some updates in their specification. So it's, that's why I said we need to align the specification. This is a, not a one-way ticket, it's a two-way ticket. Oh, and a lot of iterations to be expected. Yes. As, okay. uh, this is as usual at the end of each release. We had this in 17, we had this in 16, 15. If you ask me for an, a release where this not happened, I couldn't tell you. Okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, would you like to go in some, uh, some details maybe? Yes, maybe you can have some look. Uh, I've got some slides focusing on uh, TCA topics. So this is uh, a short summary on topics related to TCA. So here's just an overview. I want to give some kind of introduction with 18 status, new with 18 work inscriptions, some information regarding with 18, a short summary and future considerations. Everything is related to this TSG. So we had a low number of corrections for release 17 and earlier this time. So all these releases are getting really stable now. This is really always reflected in the number of corrections because release 17 means we are doing maintenance, what we're always doing for all these releases. And if you check, then you can see also that we had some corrections in areas where you are really interested from TCA perspective. This is 5G browser and 5MBMS. We had a number of corrections also in this area. And the focus this time was really on with 18. Most of the documents submitted to the different working groups were on with 18. So in the moment, we are working on around 70 release 18 work items. And some of them are, are marked as closed now, but we'll see this later on. The work plan gives, as usual, an indication about the progress. 
What should be also noted is that during this TSG 102, there was also a celebration of these 25 years of CGP. And there was also a social event where also some veterans were invited to this. And I have to say, for example, for CT, most of the XCT chairs were there, only three were missing. So, do you know, by the way, why, why for us in TCCA, the Edinburgh uh, and 3GPP, well, most of all, 3GPP in Edinburgh is special? No, I do not know. In, in the last time 3GPP was here in Edinburgh in 2014, the decision to form SA6, which has been handling the mission critical topics, was made right here. So, so it's a, a special place for also for us. Yes. Oh, this, yeah. yeah. And SA6, they have also elections the next quarter. Yes, absolutely. So that's also something to, to um, pay attention to. But this will be then the task of Pune to report. It. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So just a short overview. So we 18. So even TSG is a small TSG. We have submitted 1,367 documents for approval. 19 TSs were sent for information and approval. We have agreed two new work items. So even we are just one plenary before the freeze, we still introduce new work item descriptions. And we have allocated two new TS number. So we will start working on this or have start working this in the, on TSs in the last quarter. And, and TS stands for technical speci uh, specifications. Yes, TS stands for technical specifications. So this means we have to complete these technical specifications within two plenary cycles. Yes. And the TR, that's technical report. So, so that's basically the, the study phase, if I understand. That's the right. study phase. Yes. Yeah. I can say something later on. So, just have a look on the work plan. At first, I was thinking about saying something about the progress on the different work items. But then I noticed we had so many work items, TCA related, and we had so much, so much progress that I just focusing now and tell you where we are, have good, made good progress and where we have uh, less good progress, where we're behind. So everything which was marked here yellow, where we have made good progress, so 5G pro proximity service phase two, and also on 5 MBMS phase two, this message broadcast service, and uh, on enhanced MCS e rail, I rail. This is uh, only progressing currently in uh, CT1. And in CT4, there were up to now no contributions, or the Chair has asked and the delegates who are active on this or interested in this topic that they shall have to get active in the next quarter. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a point to, to uh, notice for us also. What, what is the, if I may ask, like, what is the particular aspects that's, uh, that CT4 addresses on this topic? I have to say, I do not know this in well, detail. In, in, in general, compared to what is the C difference between C, CT1 and C, CT4 okay, generally. On, okay, on this high level, it's uh, the CT1 takes care of the uh, requirements between the mobile and the network. Mm -hmm. okay. And CT4 is responsible for everything what is within the network. For example, if you need for this functionality any kind of subscriptions, Okay. Then you need to go to CT4, and this is an all something what the, if the operator want to give a feature based on subscriptions, so, or so if you want to do some uh, manual editing on the yeah. uh, HSS or on the UDM, then uh, it's done. And this special functionality is then assigned in CT4, okay. and then the operator can decide if a subscriber is allowed to use this functionality mm -hmm. or not. So fundamentally, one could say that uh, in, in CT1, the functionality is, is as such uh, defined. And then, and, uh, but if you want to use it, 
in CT4, you get all the tools for, for, for deploying it and activating. Yes. Okay, exactly. good. So, hey, uh, rather important. So uh, think about the number zero there, <laughs> there and the next quarter. That's why I highlighted here especially. And here we are uh, uh, further number of uh, work items where we are also a little bit behind the schedule. There's also one uh, work item which we have agreed at the last plenary. This is the CT1 aspects of mission critical attack group attack group communication. So here we are at 50%. So for the second meeting, it's good, but still 50% to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also these uh, gateway UE function for mission critical communication. Here we are at 20%. But I have to say we are also here depending on SA6, for example. They are doing some baseline analysis and we are doing then the details as you see here, this is mainly CT1. So we are talking here about uh, the information which needs to go from the network to the UE, that the UE can handle all this stuff. And this is really the point where people need to get active since mm -hmm. this is progressing well. Yeah. And then, uh, as you see, also one part is already covered. This is this mission critical service over five MBMS. So this work item is now marked as completed. Five MBS is, is the broadcast service or in the 5G, 5G network. So basically enabling say group call, we broadcast it under one cell uh, with one signaling to all the, all the subscribers, if I understand right. Yes, that's a point. Yeah. And this is a, uh, could be video or could be uh, speech. It's, Everything, but this uh, this service is the base service to provide these kind of broadcast services. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you have currently with this group communication in your current system, yeah. but this is one, one what is sent in how it's called in five G. And <clears throat> here I just want to highlight: so we had two new work items. One is on the NF API enhancement to avoid signaling and storing of redundant data. This is in CT4 only. So see, we are talking about the NRF optimization. NRF is the node in the 5G, which is used, which is content where all the nodes are registering themselves and where other nodes then gets information which node to contact. And, and a node refer is for a regular person, basically a base station. Uh, in this case, it's more as a computer. Okay, I see. It's it's a computer, and like what you had in the past, like the mobile switching centers and all these mm -hmm. things. Okay, this is behind. But uh, as it's uh, it's service based five G, it's uh, NRF is a logical entity. Could be also together with others, but here. We are just uh, giving this here as an example. And what I would like to highlight, and that's why I put it here, that you, as you in TCCA, you are taking much care on security. In 5G, we have this, content, this concept of NF sets. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. The concept set means if you have, for example, two NRFs, which are then configured as a set, and one of them fails, the other took over the task of the other one. Hmm. So this is also security aspects, I think, which is also very important for you. So this is covered, near, can be covered by this concept for F of sets can be done in all, to, with, all net, with all nodes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have the next thing, which is, comes from also from the requirements from SS6 regarding a, uh, Network size capability exposure for application layer enabling. And this is for in CT3 mainly and some parts in CT4. CT3 is a group which takes care on policy issues. So if you want to treat a special policy, set a subscriber is, is you should use it, then these requirements ending up in CT3, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just as a background. And see, we still have studies ongoing in CT. So uh, 
just for your information that we are, so this study items, we have starting with 18. If you complete semester 18, semester 18 will be a different topic. At least we have started and depending when we finish it, it will be with 18 or with 19. And just to give a summary, so the focus of this TSG was on release 18. The progress on release 18 work are within the current time frame, so we are more or less on time. In CT3 and CT1, there was a decision to have an additional meeting in January to make sure to complete all the work because for some of them work items, they noted they need more than one meeting. So that's why we have this additional meeting in January to be more positive to complete the work by March next year. And this was me, and as we have seen, some of the work items in the TCA area are behind the schedule. So if you're interested in these work items, try to get active. Uh -huh. Okay. And then future considerations. As I said, in some of the work items in, in this area, we had made good progress. You have seen this as yellow highlighted in the past slides. And in this TSG, we also started the discussion on 6G, mainly on the 6G timeline. And for this, we had a joint session this time with RAN, SA, and CT. And the indication is that the 6G is currently intended to be in Greece 21. And the completion date is somewhere beginning, in between beginning and end of 2029. This fits then to the timeline from IMT 2030. As this as end of 29, we need to provide all inputs to IMT to, to ITU on these topics that they have a complete overview in the documentation regarding IMT 2030. You may ask why CT, if I list this for CT, the background for this is simply, uh, usually we are relying on SA to get input, but when we have a switch from 5G to 6G this time, we have some additional tasks. I would like to give some uh, explanations for this. So when we had the task from 3G to, when we move from 3G to 4G, the first thing what we have done in CT, uh, when we have known the principal architecture from SA, we analyzed which protocols should be used for this. And based on this, we have looked then on the protocols we are currently using. Are they possibly used? Or do we have some better protocols which fit better, especially for example, from ITF? Then we're also analyzing the two the protocols from ITF, if they fit better. In 3G, from 3 to 4G, we selected, for example, for the control plane diameter from 4G to 5G. We had the same this similar discussion, which protocols are better? Should we continue using diameter and GDP or should we use uh, a new protocol? And the selection was then to use for the complete control signaling HDP over TCP. Okay. And so, this so. is something we need to do now for 6G as well. Once we know what's going on, how protocols have developed, do we want to continue with the protocols we are currently using? Should we use the same protocol stacks and so on? So it's a, a kind of natural checkpoint yes. for, and a major, major decision then. It's a major decision. And for example, this is then a decision which blocks us then to this protocol for the whole 6G. So mm -hmm. it's a very important decision. If you made something wrong, we have then a lot of work afterwards. So one could say that maybe then 2040 or something is the next point to, to make a decision since yes. uh, uh, really, really is this more or less a 10 year cycle. Yeah, it's we are at a point of yeah, somehow 10 years, but every 10 years we start with something new. Yeah. Okay. Triggered by it you, the last trigger was IMT 2020. The next trigger is IMT 2030. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then 2040 might be the next, mm -hmm. yeah. if they continue like this. Mm -hmm. 
yeah if the if the future is like the past then it goes like this yeah <laughs> it, it depends yeah it always depends all right good good uh quite a lot of thing there on the on on the uh, work plate so and the release release 19 things if i understand right you would be starting in the third quarter uh next year if you finish the the the, yes. the release 18 basically basically by by june then you don't take vacation but you not start with the next one yes and this is the expectation that in latest in september we will start with release 19 mm, yes and also continuous maintenance of releases before and and now now obviously the uh, from from the stage 2 uh, here today as as we are recording this this the sa is is de deciding on on the topics for for release 19 but there are already we know some some uh, some from working groups like sc 6 they are going to do this and this and that has been approved now already yeah. And they, they, they can uh, proceed with those things. Let's say in this way, as soon as in SA groups, we have some work item descriptions <clears throat> and these work items give me details and we get some details from the working groups that they have done something. Then we use this always a basis and start with work item descriptions and the mm. analysis. Okay. So, uh, best of success with that. There's again, and uh, hopefully quite quite interesting things coming up uh, and obviously like I said for us we need to try to see if we could could um, be a bit more active on some of the, those topics which are are at, at, at risk what happens if if uh, they're not finalized by June uh, first of all there will be a check uh, first checkpoint in Mar in March next year when the work type is not completed there, then the work item rapporteur and also together with the working group who took the lead and or infected, affected, they have to make an analysis how many topics are left over and if these topics can be solved within one quarter. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if they cannot do this and they have to do analysis, how much time it needs to remove this functionality from release 18. Oh, yes. Okay, so and if the removal is more than doing it, then what happens? Uh, at least in the past, it was always like this, that uh, none of the work item rapporteurs want the discussion that his work item gets removed. So you always get the information at this point in time. Yes, it's possible to do this in the next two meetings. Okay, good. So, but but it would be better better uh, for all of us if if uh, we are able to provide more more yes. support. Yes, yeah, the point is also since we are also having these uh, coded coding within our TSs, mm. and since we need always some time to check the coding, yeah. that everything is in line and that all uh, files have the same functionality. It's always we always need uh, at least one planner cycle to all do all this checking. Mm. So basically, a, a quarter of a year for yes. this. Yeah, because we always have these TSGs. Mm. So the so final approval is always the next TSG. Yeah. So, and for the, for example, in sec in Q two next year, we have two physical meetings followed by the plenary, and usually in physical meetings we make. In face-to-face -face meetings, we make good progress, and people are really pushing forward that everything is online, and we do not have too many uh, open issues left over. Okay. All right, good. Um, is there anything else? We, what would make sense for us to discuss today? Um, at the moment, I think we captured most of the topics. Okay, then I stop sharing and and uh, and uh, so that you have the full screen screen again. Uh, thank you so much for for this update. Uh, we collected some actions for for us, and uh, as we are in the end of the year, I wish to thank you for this year. Wish you also Merry Christmas. And the next version we will uh, be providing to you uh, from uh, Maastricht in March, from the the 
uh, plenary 100, 103. Mm -hmm. And thanks for the nice talk. And wishes to you. Enjoy Christmas and have a good time this is during this time for the yeah, for the next year. Yes. Thank you. you and, and thank you for joining and, and uh, till the next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.